We're now going to have a look at grain aeration. It's another way that we can manage grain in storage. It's a way of managing insects and managing grain quality. The way we do that is we use cool dry air pass through the grain and the silo by way of uh, aeration fan similar to this one here on this silo. We pass the cool dry air through that grain mass and what we do is we actually cool the grain down to temperatures that start to have an effect on the quality of the grain and on the activity of the insects. The cooler we can get the grain, the longer we find the life cycle of the insect becomes. So it's no longer a short, maybe four week period at 30 to 35 degrees. It can be extended out to as far as 15 to 20 weeks, perhaps at say 22 degrees centigrade. The other thing it does is it evens temperature out in the grain mass. It evens moisture out in the grain mass and that has a direct effect on the grain quality in that silo. The other great thing it does for us is also it manages quality of things like seed stored in the silo, keeps germination because it keeps the grain cool. And if people are storing things like malting barley, it's another way to ensure that we can maintain the germination viability of that seed. So this is one example of the sort of aeration we can have in a grain silo. And we'll just go over here and have a look at another example of uh, aeration in silos. This silo here is another example of aeration cooling. You'll notice it's a cone based silo and we have the aeration fan here on the cone and inside that silo you'll have an aeration duct which will have perforated ducting where the air will be forced through the grain in the silo. Now this type of aeration is what we would typically call cooling aeration. The sort of flow rates that we have for cooling aeration is one to two litres per second per tonne of grain. In some cases people look to use aeration for drying aeration but the flow rates we need to do that are much greater. They're around the 16 to 20 litres per second per tonne, so it's quite a big difference. So you would not expect this type of aeration to actually dry grain in any normal situation. The other thing you'll notice here behind me is what we have an aeration control system. There is no question that the best way to use aeration is to use it in conjunction with one of these units so that we get the maximum benefit out of our aeration system that we put in place. The thing this will do for you is it will always pick for you the coolest, driest air. One of the things that people run into problems with is if they start to put over moist air into the grain through the aeration unit, which will be any air that's going to be above 85% relative humidity. So it's really important that we use one of these. And in many respects, I would say that the first thing you want to go and get yourself if you're looking at using aeration as a management system is the controller, then get the aeration units after you've got that controller so you can run it to its optimum capacity. Going over the main points on cooling aeration, Grain temperatures below 20 degrees centigrade significantly reduce mould and insect activity. Cooling grain also helps to maintain seed viability and germination. Controlling aeration is a process which goes through continuous, then rapid, then maintenance aeration. It's best to use an aeration controlling system to cool grain and to select cool dry air. And it's important that we remember not to put in air that's going to be above 85% relative humidity. All this information is available on the GRDC fact sheet. It's also available on the GRDC Extension Project website, www.storedgrain.com.au. So it's well worth considering aeration cooling as a way of managing grain insects and grain quality in your storage system.